Hey guys, in this video, we're taking a look at Ableton's analog synthesizer. So this is a subtractive synth that ships with Ableton Suite. And in this video, I'm just gonna go over the front panel and explain what all the different settings do so that you can approach the synthesizer and have a better understanding for how to use it. So let's dive right in. So if we take a look, this is what it looks like when you first open it. We have a standard initialized patch right now. So let me quickly give you a high bird's eye view of the interface and how things are laid out. So in a nutshell here, you have what's called a shell, which is all of these parameters that you see around here where my mouse is. And then in the middle here is the display. And the display is contextual. So depending on what section you're in, so if I click on the amp or the filter, you'll notice that the display in the middle changes to give you more parameters to control for that particular module. So the architecture is fairly straightforward. We have two oscillators, two filters, two amplifiers, and two LFOs, and then a bunch of envelopes and tons of modulation routing, which we'll go over. But just to keep this simple, you can visualize oscillator one at the top here, going through filter one at the top here, going through amplifier one, and then LFO one is here. And then if you look at the bottom here, you have the exact same thing for oscillator two. So oscillator two, filter two, amplifier two, LFO2. And then on the far right here, we have some global controls, which we'll go over in a sec. And then on the far left, we have a little noise module. All right, so let's start off with the oscillator. So we have oscillator one up here. The controls are fairly simple. You have this little box where you can toggle and turn it on and off. And this is true of all the modules. You can kind of turn them on independently by clicking these little boxes here. So going back to oscillator one here. So I'm gonna turn off oscillator two by clicking in here just so that we can focus on the top section here. So if I play a note, this is the standard sound. So we have a little volume slider here. This way you can change the relative level of this oscillator compared to the second one, for example. Below that you have this little slider which determines how much oscillator one is going to either filter one or filter two. Because if you remember, we have two different filters in the synth. So this is a crossfader. So you can go all the way to filter one, which means all of oscillator one goes 100% through filter one. Or you can blend it in and go extreme to the other side, which is filter two. To the right of that, you have your standard shapes. So you have sine wave. If you want a pure tone, you have saw. And then you have kind of a random noise, which is white noise in this case. and. Next to that, you have three different degrees of changing the pitch. So you have octave, which is the highest resolution. Let me switch this to saw. It goes from minus three to three. Then you have a semitone slider. And then you have detune, which is in sense. And this is useful if you engage both oscillators and you want to kind of slightly detune one compared to the other. On the left here, you have this little line, and this is a dedicated envelope for the pitch of oscillator one. And it's not a ADSR envelope, it's just a simple ramp. So for example, if I disengage this ramp completely, I'm just getting a normal sound, but then you can actually make it so that the pitch quickly goes up and down, down this ramp here. And you can change how long it takes for it to go down, or you can do the opposite and ramp up. And this is useful for percussion stuff if you want to kind of create blips and bleeps. And you can drag like I'm doing here with the mouse, or you can use this time and initial pitch envelope um, sliders here directly. All right, below that we have these three different sections for controlling different aspects of the oscillator. The first one is pitch mod, which allows you to change the frequency or the pitch of the oscillator using either the LFO or the keyboard. The keyboard is set to 100% by default and that gives you standard kind of equal temperament tuning. And this is most of the time you're gonna use this if you wanna play standard melodies. If you go all the way to zero, there is no pitch tracking so that you can create sort of a drone. So regardless of what key I press, I'm always getting the same pitch. And to the left of that, you have LFO contribution and you'll notice it's grayed out. So in order to enable any kind of LFO modulation, you need to go over here and make sure the corresponding LFO is turned on. So for oscillator one, it's pre-wired to LFO one. So you just go here and make sure LFO one is on by clicking on it. And then if you go back, you can increase the LFO contribution. Next to that, we have pulse width and you'll notice this is grayed out as well. So in this case, I have to pick my square wave in order to enable pulse width. And then you can manually control the width of the pulse, which is just the duty cycle of how long the pulse width is on versus off. And then of course you can have pulse width modulation using LFO1 here. 
And finally, we have this sub slash sync. And here you can choose between two different modes. Either you can choose sub, which engage is um, a sub oscillator one octave below, and you can increase its level here. <laughs> And depending on which wave you have selected, so if you have saw or square selected, you'll get a square wave sub oscillator. And if you choose the sine wave, then you'll get a sine wave sub oscillator. And it's always an octave below, so you can't change that. The other mode is sync, and this is just hard sync. So it uses a separate waveform, which you don't have control over, to reset the cycle here. And you can use this ratio slider to increase how the relative frequency is for that hidden oscillator. <laughs> Oscillator 2 is identical, so I'm not going to cover that. But again, you can just go here, turn it on, and then you have the exact same settings up in here. And incidentally, Oscillator 2, you'll notice its LFO is LFO 2, which is the one down here. So you can have two independent LFOs controlling the two different waveforms together. So besides the two oscillators, the other way to generate sound is with this noise generator. And again, you can toggle it by just pressing this button in the middle. The noise doesn't have its own display here, so everything you see on the panel is all you have. And then similar controls, you can set the volume of the noise here. You can assign this noise to either filter one or filter two or some blend in between. And then you have this color knob, which just changes. There's a built-in six dB slope, uh, low pass filter assigned here. So you can change the color of the noise. And if you remember, you have white noise in each of the oscillators as well. But having this dedicated noise allows you to change the color and it also allows you to preserve your standard pitched oscillators. All right, now that we've covered the sound generators, let's move over to the filters, which is the section next to that here. So again, you have two filters, one at the top, one at the bottom. You can engage them and disengage them independently here. I'm only going to engage filter one for now to keep things simple, but filter two is 99% the same. And I'll talk about the differences in a sec here. But effectively, filter one, you can toggle here. Next to that, you have this drop down to choose the type of filters. You have low pass, band pass, notch, high pass, and formant, which emulates kind of the human voice. And for each one, you have a different choice of slope. And down here, we have this 2F2 percentage slider. So this allows you to route filter 1 into filter 2. So if I set this to 100%, it'll go through filter 1 and then through filter 2, effectively giving you a cascade or a serial connection between the two filters. But that's it for the little kind of shell interface for filter 1. You just have your standard controls, filter type, resonance, and frequency. So the primary thing you'll see on the right here, or on the left, sorry, is this ADSR envelope generator, which is dedicated to this filter. And you can assign that to either frequency or resonance, as we'll see in a sec. But effectively, it's a standard ADSR envelope generator, so you can set the attack time by dragging these little dots, the sustain level, the decay time, and then the release time down here. And you can change the slope of the lines here to either linear or exponential to get a different character. Alternatively, if you don't want to mouse around these dots here, you can set the values directly either by dragging the mouse or by typing something in the keyboard here if you wanted to. So the parameters are all here. You have attack, decay, sustain, and then release over here. You'll notice there's a bunch of different other parameters, so let's cover those. The two on the left here are related to assigning velocity to different parameters, and velocity is just how fast you press a key on the keyboard. So for example, attack to velocity means that I can make it so that if I press a key really fast, it reduces the attack time. And if I press it slowly, it kind of ramps up slowly. And this is cool for creating like dynamic patches where you can have percussive sounds if you play fast. So let me try to demo that here if I find the right settings. And envelope to velocity just means that the overall level of the envelope is controlled by the velocity. And then if we jump to the right here, there's two extra parameters. One is slope time. And this is kind of a unique thing that I haven't seen in other envelopes. But effectively, the sustain phase can be set to actually fade out slowly over time. So if you can see the little drawing here, the sustain is kind of sloping down. And finally, on the right here, you have this loop setting. And you have three different options. If you set it to off, it behaves like a standard envelope generator, where as long as the key is down, it's going to be in the sustain stage. And then when you let go, it's going to complete the release stage. If you set it to ADR, it's going to skip the sustain stage. And instead, it's going to start looping the attack in this decay stage as you hold the key down. In a way, it's giving you an extra LFO. And what's cool is that every voice you play, since this is a polyphonic synth, has its own envelope generator. So you can actually have these polyrhythmic sounds. <laughs> The next one is ADRR, and this one is similar to the other one, except it'll also loop the release 
phase. And finally, you have this last one, ADSAR. And this one will behave like a standard envelope generator, except when you release the key, it'll play back the attack decay release phase again. And this is cool for creating kind of damper effects where you get a release sound going. So that covers all the different parameters at the top here, which are all to do with the envelope generator. And then at the top here, you have two more checkboxes. One is legato, and this just means that when you play legato, it's not gonna re-trigger the envelope. It's gonna keep playing it from the position it was previously at. And if you choose free, it's similar to kind of a trigger effect where it'll play through the whole envelope in one shot, regardless of how long you hold the note. And this is cool for like percussive sounds. And below the envelope generator parameters, you have three different sections. The first one here is drive, and this just allows you to add some subtle distortion. So you can turn it off completely, or you have three different flavors of symmetric or asymmetric distortion, which get progressively more aggressive. All right, to the right of that, you have this frequency mod section, and this just means the cutoff frequency of the filter. You can assign it to LFO1, to the keyboard, or to the envelope generator right here. And similarly, you just drag up to set the amount. So if you want more LFO1 for filter, or you can assign keyboard tracking, which is very typical in most synthesizers where the higher you play up on your keyboard, the more open the filter becomes. And then the envelope, which is what we've been talking about. And it's worth noting that these values go negative as well, which instead of increasing the value of the cutoff frequency decreases it. And next to that, we have resonance mod, which is exactly the same parameters, except for the resonance slider instead of the frequency. What's useful for resonance is the formant one, where the resonance actually controls the vowel sound instead of the actual resonance. <laughs> The only difference between filter one and two, like I mentioned before, is that filter one, you can route into filter two with this slider here. And then filter two has a slave button. When you turn that on, effectively the control, the frequency control of filter one also controls filter two at the same time, including any modulation you assign to this uh, slider here. In that case, the frequency control of filter two becomes the relative offset of the cutoff frequencies between the two filters. Next in the chain is our VCA or our amplifier, which controls the volume of the sound effectively. So as you'll see here, the parameters are very, very similar to the filter display here. So let's quickly go over the shell parameters, which are super simple. You just have panning and then level. And this is useful when you have both amplifiers engaged, you can kind of pan one left, one right, and set different levels relative between them. So if we go and click here, you'll see that the display becomes contextual to amplifier one. Same exact envelope generator parameters, so I don't have to go through these again. Every, all the blue text you see here is exactly the same as we covered here. The only difference is the things that you can assign to the envelope generator here. So instead of having the cutoff frequency and resonance, in the amplifier section, we have panning and level, which are the two knobs here. Finally, we have this LFO section on the right, and you have two LFOs, which you can toggle independently. LFO one at the top, two at the bottom. The shell parameters are super simple. You have either hertz or note-based uh, setting of the rate. If you set it to note, it'll sync it to the clock of the DAW, and then you have note divisions down here, which you can set, and then same thing for LFO two. Once you click on the LFO section, you'll get the LFO page here, and it's shared for both LFO one and two. So you have one at the top, two at the bottom. And this is where you can change the waveform. So you can change it from sine, triangle, rectangle, and then two types of noise, which give you kind of sample and hold. If you set it to triangle, you can change the shape using this width parameter, which turns it into a sawtooth at either ramp up or ramp down. Same thing for rectangle, you can do standard pulse width modulation here. Retrig, when you turn it on, retriggers the LFO every time you press a key. Offset is just a phase offset of what portion of the wave starts. Delay is how long it takes when you press a key before the LFO kicks in. And attack gives you kind of a ramp up for the LFO. We can go to our triangle, turn it more into a saw wave. And then finally, we get to this global section here. So you have the master output volume. 
And then you have dedicated oscillator for vibrato, which you can increase the amount of here and change its rate. Below here, you have unison mode with a detuning knob. Unison just means that when you press one note, it'll stack voices together. And then detune determines how they're, they, all the voices that are stacked are detuned relative to each other. And below here, you have this glide setting. So if you turn that on, you're effectively getting a portamento. So it'll slide the notes between each other. And you can set the amount here. And then you have this legato switch. If you set it to legato, glide will only play if you hold a note down while pressing another note. On the left here, you have this quick routing scheme here. It's pre-wiring certain configurations of how the oscillators are routed through the filters. And all it's doing is just automatically setting some settings for you like this percentage slider of which filter the oscillators routed to, as well as this two filter setting here. Next to that, you have the dedicated vibrato section. So if you enable vibrato over here, like I said before, you have additional controls like delay, how long it takes before vibrato kicks in, attack, so like a ramp up of vibrato, error, which gives kind of randomization between the different voices of the pitch of the vibrato. And then you can assign vibrato to the mod wheel, which is very common for performance. Next to that, we have a keyboard section, and this is everything to do with how the pitch and stuff like that is mapped here. So you have octave, uh, semitone, and detune, which are just three different granularities of detuning and setting the global pitch. Pitch bend range is just how, when you slide the pitch bend wheel, how much it'll pitch up and down. Uh, stretch percentage gives you stretch of the actual tuning. So at 0%, you get equal temperament. And as you increase it up, it starts stretching the tuning so that higher notes are pitched higher and lower notes are pitched lower. And then error next to that just gives random kind of tuning imprecision errors. So this is good to emulate sort of an analog synthesizer that where the pitches between the voices aren't super consistent. Up here, we have this voice selection. So you can make it a monosynth or you can choose from two to 32 voices and make it kind of a beefy po uh, polysynth if you wanted to. Below that is priority, and this just determines if you run out of voices and you play too many notes, how the new voice will get reallocated. Then we have this unison section, and again, this is grayed out until you enable unison here. So you can determine how many voices you want stacked together between two and four. And then delay will progressively delay as new voices get added in, so it gives you kind of an interesting effect as you're slowly beefing up the sound as you hold the note down. And finally, you have a glide mode drop down here. So when glide is enabled, you can choose between constant time or proportional time. Constant just means that regardless of what interval you play, the glide time will be the same. And proportional means that larger intervals will play slower, will ramp up slower than shorter intervals. And yeah, that covers everything you need to know for the analog synth, all the buttons and sliders. So hopefully this has demystified this synth for you. Yeah, I just wanted to keep this video simple and all about the interface and not about sound design or anything like that. So I'll probably do separate videos for sound design. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. And hopefully this was interesting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.